safe spaces and trigger warnings have remained at the forefront of college news for the past few years. Apart from the polarizing nature of the topic, high-profile events surrounding safe spaces on college campuses have made national and international news, lifting this issue to a higher degree of relevancy. In recent news, UC Berkeley cancelled alt-right-wing commentator Milo Yiannopoulos' scheduled speech due to intense and violent protests, which were partially from left-wing students in an anarchist group known as the Black Bloc. Many students felt that, based on Yiannopoulos' previous comments about Leslie Jones and other people of color, he was a racist and there was no safe space for racists. At Brown University in fall 2014, a similar but peaceful discussion and protests were held surrounding the role of safe spaces in sexual assault lectures. Brown had scheduled a debate between Jessica Valenti, the founder of Feminizing.com, and Wendy McElroy, a libertarian. Senior Catherine Byron, a member of its sexual assault task force, thought this debate would be troubling, so she created a physical safe space filled with cookies, coloring books, Play-Doh, calming music, and students and staff members trained to deal with trauma for students to escape to during the debate. Although the Brown example defines safe spaces as a physical space, some define safe spaces as, as a metaphorical one. There is no consensus as to what a safe space is. This ambiguity in definition is also present at UNC. A place where somebody feels completely comfortable um, to express what they're feeling, their thoughts, um, just to like candidly speak what's on their mind and, and to get feedback if they want it. Having the outside world kind of make an effort to make someone feel more comfortable. I think a safe space would be a, a place or just a space in general in which you're comfortable to be yourself or that you feel supported in who you are and your identity. Inherently atmosphere that allows people of a shared interest or background or different backgrounds even. Uh, I don't really know. I think it's a place where you can think what you want to think and be who you want to be and act like you want to act, but I, I don't really actually know the definition. Our physical places, like on this campus uh, in North Carolina and throughout the world. More based off of um, interpersonal relationships and kind of the connections you have with people. It wouldn't necessarily have to be a place. It could be abstract, like a period of time, mm -hmm. or like the energy of a group of people, or like that. Okay. At UNC, safe spaces have been subject to widespread debate and political action. In fall 2016, the Latinx community rallied for more safe spaces outside of Craig North, their current meeting space. The campus Y itself is a self-proclaimed safe space for students of color and those interested in social justice. However, with the higher traffic from the Meantime Coffee Company, some members are reevaluating what a safe space means. Names of buildings have also been a point of contention. Though it was previously named Saunders Hall after 19th century Ku Klux Klan leader, Carolina Hall's name was also debated. Many students and faculty members find this name as whitewashing history and would have preferred Hurston Hall after African-American writer Zora Neale Hurston. Many UNC students' definitions of safe spaces indicate that these spaces hold intrinsic value for their student experience. However, there are counter arguments that question whether, when safe spaces are put into practice, actually threaten the sharing of ideas and free speech. The most prevalent initial criticism is that safe spaces violate the First Amendment right to freedom of speech. Since 2000, 240 campaigns to prevent speakers on college campuses have been created. Proponents of freedom of speech say this is the right of every individual under the Constitution to be able to speak their mind and that this right should not be taken away in any situation, regardless of the climate of a particular campus. A second compelling argument is that the implementation of safe spaces and trigger warnings prevent college students from experiencing new ideas and hearing different perspectives. One Columbia student argued that he doesn't see how you can have a therapeutic space that is also an intellectual space. The idea is that a safe space is so concerned with protecting people's feelings that it prevents productive academic discussions and the exchange of ideas. In many classes and topics, such as philosophy or gender studies, the most important points can hinge on comfortable things. Thus, it becomes difficult to speak openly when trying not to say the wrong thing. Opposing points of view just defend them. They want to be kept safe from ideas that they may disagree with. And if they want to be safe from ideas, there are better places to be than college and university campuses. Yes, I think they should be held accountable for creating safe spaces for marginalized groups because the university should be focused on student success and if groups that are marginalized don't feel safe and don't feel like they are in an environment where they can succeed, then the university is failing them. For the most part, yes. I think that um, the university does need to 
be more clear about um, what is a safe space and um, what the resources are to find those safe spaces. So I think it's easy for like me or for other white people to be like, oh, like safe spaces aren't really needed. Um, but I think that a lot of the university already kind of is a safe space for me um, in terms of the fact that I'm being protected just as part of my identity in a lot of those areas where other people are not. And like they have done all these different things to purposefully exclude or to silence, then they should also now be trying to play a role in giving a time and a space and like an opportunity, I guess, for these different marginalized groups. Um, I think it depends, but ultimately I think it's an individual person's responsibility to have a safe space and I think in a lot of ways college should be a safe space to like say what you want to say openly and think what you want to think um, but I don't think that it's Carolina's job to like give a kid a room and say like here's your safe space. I think the university does have a role to play uh, in creating safe spaces but also it's a two-way street so almost like a, 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 a contract you know when people join UNC they know that it's impressed upon them that the kinds of people we want and the environment we want to create is one in which everyone feels comfortable. So it's, it's a, yeah, it's like a university precedent and it's also individuals within it buying into that um, environment. It is important to note that safe spaces don't just exist on university and campuses and they're not just for privileged young adults. There is the argument that we as a collective society spend an absurd amount of time and resources dedicated to worrying about how students spend their time and energy at these institutions, especially when a large majority of them are still trying to find themselves and experiment with countless intersectional identities they may have. Maybe we should relax and trust that teenagers and 20-somethings will turn out okay. Perhaps we should recall that targeting and the belittling of others is abusive and that emotional safety is something we sh that shouldn't be ridiculed. Who belongs and who doesn't, in-groups and out-groups, create endless uncertainties for the vast majority of people. Along with rejections people deal with day-to-day, -day, members of marginalized communities face the bigger feeling that society wasn't designed for them, that at best they're afterthoughts. People that dominate the cultural pyramid face rejection too, but none this kind of rejection. Most likely they're not usually paying attention to the intricate social cues others pick up when trying to navigate the waters of a society not made to fit them. Dealing with fear, injured feelings, or humiliation in these kinds of cultural clashes aren't easy. However, safe spaces and personal identity are seldom things to blame as sources of conflict. Within or outside safe spaces, the real problem is usually failing to empathize. The genuine solution is to treat everyone with respect, humility, and compassion. We all make mistakes. However, we should have the readiness to learn from them. Much of the disagreements surrounding safe spaces stem from the fact that no one really knows what they are and there is no consensus over their definition. Students across intersectional identities all define safe spaces differently. Perhaps universities, including UNC, should do a better job of defining safe spaces for their students in order to mitigate any conflict.